Perfect. So um, I what I'll do at the start is I'll just explain a little bit about um, who I am and who Rotoblast are, just so everyone understands. Um, so I'll share my screen. Um, can everybody see that? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. So Rotoblast yep. is um, an Italian uh, manufacturer of products for mass timber construction. Um, so we're based in Northern Italy and um, we've over 500 staff um, and we've worked on over, or sorry, we have 10,000 products uh, for timber construction. Um, the black dot represents our head office and the blue dots are our subsidiaries worldwide. Um, so as I stated, we're uh, a lot of the CLT manufacturers would use us as their technical partner. Um, we provide technical information, CPDs, and obviously being a manufacturer, we provide the product as well. Um, just to prove we practice what we preach, this is our, a brand new automated warehouse and it's made completely out of timber. So these big timber uh, racks here are 20 meters high and that's where we store all of our products. Um, and the rest of the warehouse is made out of glue lamb and CLT. Um, we collaborate um, in most countries in Europe, well, nearly all countries in Europe. Um, sadly, a lot of them are way more advanced than Ireland when it comes to mass timber, and these are just a selection of some of the projects we've worked on. We also work with Timber Frame in Ireland. So when we speak of timber construction, um, a lot of people would think of mass timber and glue lamb, but it also incorporates timber frame. And in Ireland, we have a, we have a very good history of uh, manufacturing houses with timber frame. So it's a very sustainable way of mass producing houses, which is what we're currently, uh, currently doing in Ireland. Then we have more European style of timber construction. Um, and we also do timber restoration. So a big thing in Ireland at the minute is we have a lot of listed buildings with some fantastic timber structures. So we work a lot with heritage architects in uh, being able to keep this important timber structure and also bring it up to today's standards from an engineering point of view. Um, so that's a little bit about Rotho Blass. Um, I'd, I think I'll start by showing some current projects in Ireland, um, just to give you a flavour of, of what's happening and um, um, what's happening in our own country rather than Scandinavia or Central Europe. So um, the first one I'll show is um, Glen Fort Timber Engineering. Um, and this is in Dungannon in Northern Ireland. And they've built a brand new workshop and uh, offices completely out of glue lamb. Um, and uh, the office side, the stairs and floors and ceilings are made from CLT. So um, the best way to describe why they, they took the decision to make it out of mass timber is one, they're a timber engineering company and they want to use as much timber as possible. But two, um, it's, not only is timber the same uh, structural capacity as concrete um, or steel, it's a lighter building material, so it's easier to work with. Um, you'll see um, the post and beam sections here. They were they were installing three of these per day on site, so they had the frame of the structure up after I think it was about a week and a half. Um, and then they started um, with all the bracing you'll see in the ceilings um, and then they started with covering the building up. This particular bit, this typ typical type of construction for Europe, but would you believe when this was built, it was the first of its kind in Ireland. Now, since then, we've had two big logistics centres um, constructed from a glue lamb frame uh, down in Dublin in Ballycoolin, I think. Um, so. The, everybody is now starting to see the benefits of timber. Um, but it's a small company like Glenfort that actually uh, paved the way for something much larger. 
which is absolutely fantastic. Um, I have another picture here. This is how it looks from the inside. So um, you'll see everything is, is timber. So the staircase is made from CLT and then the floor for the office section is all CLT as well. Um, and they've clad the building using a composite timber panel with insulation. So they follow their ethos of using as much timber as possible right away through the build. Um, and we're going to be holding a joint event later on in the year um, in this venue. So I'll pass details on to Irene and she can pass it amongst the group. But if, if anyone wants to visit uh, this project, they're more than welcome to. It's actually working now as a as a workshop. And also I think they've moved into their offices. So it's a working building, um, but a fantastic example of what can be achieved with timber. Um, on a on what is relatively a small scale uh, and then it was replicated in a much bigger scale. Um, the next project I'd like to show is this was done in Dublin by a company in Cork called uh, Cedarlan. Um, and this is a four story extension onto an existing uh, traditional built house. Um, I think it's around Leeson Street. So this is the design. So this part here is your existing uh, traditional built house. And the new extension is completely made out of uh, glue lamb and CLT. Um, you will see anywhere where there's a connector um, that's connecting the, the lower wall, the floor and the, the top wall together. So you're getting a really um, a, a really high capacity connection between each floor. Um, and there is an example of the actual on site image. So you can see you have your your existing house with your traditional build and you can see the CLT is connected through a range of plates and connectors. Um, in this particular build, uh, we helped the guys with some of the, the connections. So this area here was, um, in the end, it turned out to be a very easy connection. So what you have is um, a bracket that is connected with two concrete bolts here. And then it's fastened back to the CLT with screws. So you can see in this section here, we have four brackets connecting to the concrete back to the back to the timber. Um, and this particular project was actually driven by the client. The client was adamant they wanted to use timber uh, in the extension. They didn't want to go down the traditional route of steel and concrete, um, which is few and far between at the minute. A lot of people like the idea of using timber, but a lot of the times they don't have the resources to go and find out how to uh, how to actually bring the project to life. Um, but in Ireland alone, we've now five or six companies that offer design and build with glue, lamb and CLT, which is fantastic. Um, should have another image of this project. Um, and that's just an example of from the, the ground floor all the way back up to the, the top of the building. So it's the same principle. You have your connector connecting back to the concrete and then connecting back into the timber. Again, as I pointed out with the strap, this is connecting the, the ground floor wall to the to the second uh, second floor wall. Um, and what that's doing actually for the floor is it's pulling uh, the three elements together. So again, um, all your bracketry is on the outside of the building. Uh, this will be covered in insulation, so there'll be no visible brackets on, on the inside of your structure. Um, the next project is actually one that is just finished. It is um, in Cork University. It's their new sport hall. Um, let me just find it. Um, so this was, um, or this is Cork University. This is their new sports hall. So you can see you they've used glue lamb beams here to make the cross section and then uh, CLT walls. 
Um, this is quite um, this is quite a popular choice at the minute, hybrid structures. So they use, uh, in this case, they've used a, a concrete upstand wall, and that's, that's the base for the CLT to be installed. And then your beams and roof section, uh, your beams are glue lamb, your roof section is CLT. Um, and this project um, from start to finish happened quite quickly from the design stage to actually being on site, which was great because um, the big thing with timber at the minute is obviously people are worried about fire fireproofing and uh, getting a pass building regs. But um, this particular project uh, happened quite smoothly um, and it was able to be delivered to site relatively quickly. And then the erection on site is, is a quick and easy process. All these connectors here are actually, uh, the timber is machined in the workshop and as many of the brackets and connectors are installed in the workshop as possible. So when it comes to site, it's a matter of putting the structure together in, in sequence. So you'll see here, there's another range of connectors here. You have your connectors here and then your CLT is typically connected using um, screws and uh, for anywhere to concrete, it was pretty similar. You have a, a bracket or a plate that will connect the, the timber back to the concrete. Um, you will see uh, from the next image, it was a typical Irish uh, rainy wet day when I was on site. Um, but you will see the timber is fully intact and there's no damage to the timber. So the myth of Ireland is too wet for timber to be used in, in mass timber to be used in general construction uh, is incorrect because you look at Scandinavia, you look at Scotland, very wet and cold climate. Um, and in Scotland, they started to produce their own CLT. It was through university. And in Scandinavia, every country in Scandinavia has their own producers and they will supply and install these products all year round. Um, so it was fantastic to see how well the timber was holding up in such wet conditions. Um, in just to point out here, um, they're actually the glazing profiles for any of the windows that are going to be installed. And the, the fact they're screwed or connected back straight into timber is a much quicker and easy install on site. Um, so they're the three of the most recent projects we have in Ireland. Uh, currently, um, we are working on another three projects that hopefully will be on site this year. Uh, there's one in Galway uh, and two in Dublin. One of them in Dublin is um, a visitor centre, a toilet block and a gift shop in uh, Balbriggan. And all three buildings will be a glue lamp portal frame with CLT walls and floors. So the, the building industry um, is really warming to the idea of timber. Um, for a number of reasons, and the biggest one would be uh, their carbon footprint and the su sustainability. Um, so uh, a massive selling point to timber is it has a huge amount of embodied carbon in each piece of timber. Um, and that's what's driving the likes of the big developers and uh, the Department of Housing, and Department of Education, um, really wanting to use mass timber. We have a pilot scheme for the Department of Education, which is uh, three modular schools, um, but all the modular units have to be made out of 100% timber, so there can't be any steel frame or like edge steel in it. So the fact that the department is leading this and is requesting these type of modular units shows that there's a big shift in the market uh, for the desire to use mass timber. Um, We've also, I think up in Northern Ireland, there's probably going to be a, at least one project this year as well, uh, which is a massive boost to the to the timber industry. Um, the the projects themselves, if if anyone wants to go and visit them, I can speak to the people involved and arrange a site visit for you. Um, it's, in my opinion, 
you don't fully uh, appreciate the the value of timber construction unless you've you stand in a building site when it's been erected or um, or just near completion because you see what can be done and what's achievable and I suppose the message is nothing is out of the question with with the correct thought and design and um, everything is achievable so if you take for argument's sake um, what we'd say is the traditional school um, hotel apartment block that can be all replicated in uh, in mass timber um, uh, the biggest point that's holding us back at the minute is is building regs so currently the building regs don't allow anybody to build a timber structure over four stories so from a commercial point of view it's not very uh, appealing to the big developers or the big development companies because they want to be 18 meters or higher um, so there's been plenty of discussions and the last the last conversation I had was about trying to introduce a sprinkler system to get it to at least six or eight stories um, while the building regs are getting changed. But again, that's that's um, that's a conversation that is going to involve government bodies because uh, putting an annex or changing a building reg is a is a very slow and tedious process, and there has to be plenty of uh, discussion about um, what's correct for the marketplace. So that's where it is at the minute. Um, but the, the building regs itself for the likes of schools, single dwellings, extensions, uh, small narrow sites in city centres, uh, mass timber is definitely a material that we need to be utilising a bit more in Ireland. Um, we have, um, I'm, I don't know if you're aware, but there's um, uh, a structure down in Avondale Forest. Um, it's called Above the Treetops, and that's uh, made a walkway made completely out of glue lamb. The glue lamb is actually Irish timber, so it was sourced by Quilche in their forests. It was sent over to one of the glue lamb producers, and they were able to glue and press the timber um, and send it back to Ireland. So we, our Irish timber can work for mass timber. Um, and that's a great example of it down in Avondale Forest. It's a tourist attraction, so anyone can go and visit it. Um, mm-hmm. But it's it's something you should visit to to yeah. to see what can be done. Um, another topic that we want to discuss was um, the reusable factor of timber construction. So. Um, if you have, for argument's sake, um, a CLT and glue lamb structure and 20 years down the road, uh, it's going to be demolished and there's going to be a new building in its place. That timber can be reused for many different projects. Uh, it can be reused for different designs. So there's actually a company in Europe that is doing a number of projects with recycled CLT. Um, so the, the life, the lifetime of the product, once it's had its first inception on a building site, it can have many different lives after that. Um, and a big factor with mass timber construction is the lack of waste going to landfill. Um, typically, when a project is designed, each panel um, and beam is cut to the, the exact length that's needed. So on-site construction, you have zero waste with a with a timber building. Um, and then having the the beauty of being able to recycle the the timber from that structure and use it for another structure uh, many years away is uh, something that they're really embracing in Europe. And the fact that there's one company that that's what they've based their whole ethos around and they currently have a number of projects in Europe would suggest obviously that as a carbon footprint and sustainable building, mass timber and timber construction is is where where it's at at the minute it's something that i think in ireland we should be we should be thinking more of we've many forests in ireland and we can produce our own timber um and when we look at some of our other countries like even the uk uh, one of the biggest clt manufacturers in europe has bought uh, a sawmill and forests in the uk so 
they, they're obviously going to expand into manufacturing in the UK. Scotland have already done it. Um, and then, as I said, Central Europe and Scandinavia, um, it's their building material of choice. Uh, all the government buildings are, are usually in timber. And in France, actually, I think it was last year or the year before, uh, the government brought in legislation that 50% of all public buildings, including social houses, have to be from timber construction. So the whole of Europe is really pushing hard for, for the use of timber. Um, and in Ireland, we're probably at the very start of the journey. So it's it's great that there's so many enthusiastic people that are, are looking to design and use mass timber. Um, Another topic that is right on trend at the minute is, as I briefly touched on, is uh, sustainability, sustainable building and um, embodied carbon in timber. Um, I'm by no means an expert in this field, but from discussions with the likes of the Irish Green Building Council and the Passive House Association of Ireland, um, the, the Irish Green Building Council actually have a calculator to to help um, a developer or um, the design team to calculate how much embodied carbon is in their structure, uh, whether that's a single dwelling house, whether it's an extension or further on down the line, hopefully uh, large scale buildings. Um, so it's vitally important that we we do the research now while the the use of timber is only starting to grow so that we have this information when we can build taller buildings um i think there's in a cubic meter of timber there's uh, one ton of embodied carbon which is an absolutely massive number um when you consider construction is usually negative uh, in the in in their carbon footprint, so um, uh, one truckload of CLT removes uh, fourteen cement lorries off our roads. Um, so the the benefits of using mass timber as so much outweigh the the our current building systems. Um, our current building systems are how we've built for so many years, and it's very difficult to change overnight, which I don't think anyone has the capability of. And that's why we're at a very, very early stage in Ireland. And I think uh, once we come across one or two uh, major projects like a school or a hospital um, using mass timber, I think that's going to open up the gates for a lot of commercial projects. It's ideally suited for open plan offices, warehouses, logistics. Um, so I think we're we're at the cusp of something uh, major starting when it comes to timber construction. Um, I was recently, well, it was the tail end of last year at a conference down in, in Wicklow. It was called uh, building wood or yeah building wood and there were some of the biggest construction companies and developers uh from around ireland at it and uh, we had some ministers from uh the government at it and the message from the commercial side of the business which is uh the likes of john sisks and big property developers they want to start using it and they want to start designing with it but the building regs is holding them back um, and that's probably where we're being held back the most is with building regs. And as I touched on at the start, it's slowly but surely the conversation is gathering pace and getting bigger and bigger. Um, the Department of Housing only a couple of weeks ago had um, had a workshop for uh, industry people and there was fire officers and structural engineers and, and anyone that's involved in the process and the general consensus is everybody wants to use it. Um, but the process is going to be a little bit slow till the building regs are changed. And the fact that there's government bodies, government departments that are pushing this, um, I feel in the next three to five years, we're probably going to see a different outlook with, with mass timber construction and hopefully a lot more projects because um, We've, at the minute, there's one school in City West um, that's uh, in planning or being approved of planning, 
and that school is fully glue ram and clt so um a project like that i think will open everybody's eyes to the fact that timber can be used in these areas like education healthcare and commercial construction um the, the general consensus when designing with mass timber is um you can't price it like for like with a with a concrete block and a block of timber they're going to be two different prices the the clt is going to be a lot more expensive but where the saving of using mass timber is uh as i touched on with the glen four project because the material is so light but so structurally strong your foundations um are a lot smaller so in a lot of cases um if you were to imagine a concrete tower and a clt tower the clt tower will actually get more floors of apartments or hotels in because their foundations are smaller and the material is lighter um typically your um your construction team on site is usually about six carpenters um and as i said previously there's zero waste because each panel is cut to the correct size your windows and doors are cut out of the panels in the factory so when they arrive and um, they're ready to be installed straight away so the benefits um of mass timber are there for everybody to see but our building regs just need to be tweaked for it to for it to happen on a large scale Um, we've recently spoke to um a, a large construction company a house builder and they're looking at ways to implement mass timber into their construction so it could be a steel frame structure with clt floors uh, and that's very popular in the uk especially around london for offices and commercial space so they'll build a steel frame and then they'll use the CLT as infill for walls and floors. Uh, so a hybrid hybrid structure. Um, that's probably what's driving the CLT market in the UK at the minute. And I would fully imagine that's probably where our commercial projects are going to start in Ireland is with a hybrid uh, structure rather than 100% timber right at the start. Um, I don't have too many examples of them because um, obviously they're in the UK and uh, I can't really share too much information about them without permission. But you could imagine um, a school or a hospital being built um, using steel frame and then it's infilled with the timber. Modular construction at the minute is in a boom with the, the housing crisis and the Ukrainian refugees. Um, a lot of the modular companies are now looking at ways to implement more timber into their um, units from um, a production point of view. Um, they're currently using steel frame and then they typically infill with like edge steel or timber frame. Um, if they can replace the steel with the timber, um, obviously the benefits for embodied carbon and sustainable building go, go through the roof. Um, but also it's timber is very easy to work with. So if timber needs to be modified, uh, you're simply using a carpenter. You're not using two or three different trades to get something changed. So the the benefits of modular construction with timber is also um, a very good selling point for for mass timber. Um, has anyone got any questions so far? Just in terms of own, just in terms of your. The test for fire test reports. You do you, you have them available or? No, so basically, um, we produce everything apart from the timber. So we produce everything to put the put the structure together. Uh, fire testing on CLT, I will be able to get some information that I can share, which is, um, but the thing to remember with fire and mass timber is, um particularly around the structural elements. So when you're connecting two pieces of timber together, typically um, that's a screw detail or it's a bracket or connector. Typically that bracket connector or screw is imbe uh, embedded into the timber. So into the dead center of the timber. And what gives you the fire rating around that connection is actually the charring rate of the glue lamb and the CLT. So it's, um, 
It's more about the charring rate of the timber rather than the structural connection. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think like a, a, a 260 by 260 glue lamp post, I think gives you a rating of about three or four hours because the charring rate works on um, the lamellas of the timber. So the lamellas of the timber are what make up your big glue lamp beam. So the first uh, lamella would, would char at a rate of 30 minutes, but each lamella after that uh, is an hour. So on a chunky piece of glue lamp, you could be looking at a charring rate of four or five hours. Um, we've, um, we've conducted some fire testing with air products um, and we've had some very, uh, very good results, which I, I'll be able to share. Um, so if anyone wants to leave their email, I can pass that information on to you. And I can also pass information on from a fire structural engineer where some tests were done and um, had passed with, without any issues. Um, the perception in the marketplace around fire with CLT and, and glue lamb is that timber goes on fire, uh, where the, the perception is concrete and steel doesn't. But timber doesn't go on fire, it chars. So it's the charring rate of each element is that's how they make up the the, the overall fire rate of a building. Um, I might be able to grab something now. Hang on a second. Um, I have a presentation. So we done a we done a mass timber seminar last year in Dublin, and we had um, a fire structural engineer um, come and present at it. So I have his presentation here. I'll what I'll do is when we finish, I will um, I'll email this individual and ask him can I share his presentation. Um, but typically. Um, when you speak a uh, fire test for for mass timber, these are the kind of tests that are that are carried out. Um, you will see there's facades. Uh, as I touched on the structural connection, the joints, um, the full scale CLT. So, as I said, um, on a hybrid structure, you can see there's a steel frame with the CLT floor here. Um, and um, it's it's exactly it behaves exactly like most building materials in the sense of the failure is based on uh, connections and pressure and timber and fire actually the pressure on timber is much less than what it is on concrete and steel. Um, there was a slide I show you. So as an example, um, we perceive steel to be a stronger material, but you can see the, the glue lamb has charred, but the steel is actually deformed. So the glue lamb is still in its condition it was, only it's charred, but the actual failure was with the steel because it deformed. So it's typically on each project, um, each project, as all projects are, they're unique. So the the fire testing around the products that are going to be used is based over the whole project rather than just saying one shoe fits all uh, when it comes to fire rating, because your connection and timber sizes are going to be different on each project. So you might have a hidden connector, which is embedded in, embedded in the timber, or you might have a screw detail, which would need to be protected uh, after it's been installed. So. Each individual diff or each individual project is slightly different, but the consensus is the charring rate on the timber is what's calculated for your fire rating for uh, floors and structural walls. That's perfect. Thanks, John. Um, I'll I'll send Jakob an email and I'll ask him if I can share his presentation now. I think we did have permission at the time, but I'll just double check with him um, just to be on the safe side. But um, if anyone wants any information, if you want to leave your email and your question in the chat, 
I can then pass on some of the information to you if you like. Thanks, Dan. Um, just you know, in terms of GDPR, if you know how, if people want to email me and I can pass on. Okay, um, yeah. And I put my email address in the chat. I just downloaded the attendance list, and actually, it didn't pick up people's email addresses from outside. So if you want to get any of the information from Owen's presentation or the recording, um, if you want to drop me an email, my email address is there in the chat. And that, that gets us around that, that issue. And I think that that's probably the, Perfect. the best option there. I'm happy to coordinate on this side. No problem at all. No problem. I'll, I'll show you one, one last thing is I just mentioned we done a seminar in Dublin last year on mass timber and we're doing another one uh, this year. It's on the 11th of May um, and it's going to be based around passive design on timber construction. So it'll take in a little bit of Irish timber frame, um, but it will also focus on uh, mass timber construction. Um, and there's actually a picture of Avondale Forest. So that's why I'd like to, to share it with you. So can you see my screen? Yeah, thanks. So this picture here is actually Avondale Forest down in Wicklow. And this is the glue lamb structure I was I was speaking about. So this is called, um, I think it's called Walk to Treetops. So it's uh, a walkway that gets you above the treetops of Avondale Forest. The views are absolutely spectacular. Um, it'd be well worth a visit um, just to see the structure itself. Um, and that's all Irish glue lamb. Um, the picture above is construction of our own uh, new warehouse that I showed you at the start. So you can see these LVL panels um, are 20 metres high. Um, and they're all load bearing, uh, all load bearing timbers. Um, this warehouse is then wrapped in CLT on the outside and then there's a, there's a cladding finish. But um, when the company decided that they were going to have to extend the warehouse, um, their first port of call was they wanted to do it in timber. Um, and I think worldwide it's the seventh largest timber warehouse in the world, but in Italy where we're based, I think it's the biggest. So um, the possibilities, I showed you <laughs> a small uh, workshop warehouse and offices in Dungannon with Glenfort. Um, and this is the extreme of, the, of that. Um, this uh, this holds 18,000 pallets and it's fully automated. So um, really and truly when it comes to timber, nothing is out of the question. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that's about all the information I have for you today. But um, as Irene said, if you want to share your email address with Irene and request specific information, I can pass that information on to you as no problem. Thanks, Thank you very much. Oh. No problem. And um, so if nobody else has any questions, um that's 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 me finished. <laughs> One question there, Joseph. Uh, you're on mute, Joseph. Um, hang on, if I can, I'll see if I can take you off mute. Can you hear me now? Yeah, got you now. Yeah. Uh, how are structural engineers adapting to this? You know, they wouldn't be familiar really with the calculations on, you know, traditional build, uh, this, which this isn't. Yeah, I suppose one thing I should have touched on, um, and you're after reminding me, is um, I suppose another area that we need to expand in Ireland for timber construction is actually education. And that would fall into the structural engineers. Uh, in Ireland, there's probably four or five structural engineers practices that are quite are very competent with glue lamb and CLT. Um, I would hazard a guess there's probably a couple of hundred engineering practices around Ireland and there's a very, as I said, four or five of them that are, are very competent at it. And um, so I think the level of upskilling when it comes to timber construction is is required. 
But companies like ourselves, we, in our head office in Italy, we have 25 structural engineers working in our technical office. So we work hand in hand with the project. So if someone had a project and were struggling to find an engineer, we can actually help on that side with the calculations. And then we can also, me personally in Ireland, I can recommend um, an engineering firm in Ireland um, that's, that could help. But a company like Glenfort and Cedarland and Cork, um, they would have their in-house engineers. So they can do the design, they can help with the design and build. Um, but the general uh, engineers practices around Ireland, there's very few that are yeah. doing a competent, but it's getting better and better. I was at a trade show on Tuesday and two separate engineering companies. Um, I'm actually going to meet one of them next week and they're very interested in starting a, a, a section of their company to be timber construction. Um, like even a big company like Arup have a couple of people within their office that is uh, that are trained on timber construction but it's it's getting bigger and better like a, every couple of months there's a new engineering company making contact because of a timber project and you want to learn more about it the uh, i see the little and aldis of this world they're big into it in their new shops yeah so with their german heritage um they want to use as much timber as possible um, typically, the company that supplies the, the timber there is an Austrian company called Wehag, and they work with an engineering company over in Sligo. Um, I think, if my memory serves me right, it's called SDS Engineering or Structural Engineering. Um, so there is plenty of offices that will have at least one person that is very uh, competent on timber construction. But generally, on large scale projects like the two logistics centres, the engineering and the supply of the timber actually happened outside Ireland. Um, and that's quite common when a, a country is only starting to, 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 to use that building material. Um, but there is plenty of interest in it. And I suppose that's that's the main thing people are willing to learn. Thank you. No problem. And as, as I said, our school on the 11th of May will focus on some engineering uh, around connections and connection details. So um, if anyone's interested in attending, um, I will I'll put my email address in the in the chat. And if anyone wants to contact me, I can give them a little bit of information on it. Sorry, just la one last point. You're ta yeah. talking about the burn rate. And you used a, a word there, I'm not familiar with it, something like the depth of, you were saying the different, the first half hour and does it? Yeah, so are, you used? so are you familiar with how glue lamb and CLT is pressed? In general, yes. Yeah, uh, so it's yeah. layers of timber uh, glued and pressed together. Yeah. So the charring rate on the first lamella is the outer mm -hmm. layer of the timber. And then each lamella inside the, the timber has its own charring rate. Lamella, is it L-E-M-E-L? -E -M -E yeah. yeah, that's it, yeah. lamella. It's, it's, what, it's what the different layers of timber are, are called. Thank you. And it's the same principle for CLT because although it's a panelized product, it's the same principle. Your charring rate on the first lamella is completely different to the charring rate on the, the lamellas inside the, the panel. Thank you. No problem. Um, Owen, can I ask a question actually? In the of you can. test information you've seen, do the lamellas uh, delaminate? You know, is that what you, so you have a particular depth, and obviously when it gets through that, the, if the charge depth isn't sufficient, you'd imagine that the next lamella will be subject to fire or it would kind of delaminate to a certain extent. I mean, um, no, it doesn't. It doesn't delaminate where that piece falls off. Right. Okay. So, uh, hang on a second there. I'll put. I'll try and put the image of um of that presentation on again. You'll see it. Uh, uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. So you'll see the char. See, you can see the the glue lamb here has charred. Yeah. But it hasn't delaminated and falling off. 
basically it charged through the timber. So the glue that's used, um, the the glue when there's heat with it, it doesn't um, it doesn't melt and the timber doesn't fall to pieces. So you can see this is what the timber looked like um, at the very start. So that's your full piece of timber. Um, you can then see how it's charred and um, it's lost its shape, but it's still a structural element, unlike the steel, because the steel has uh, deformed, where the, the glue lamb has stayed in place. So it's not that it delaminates um, like, for argument's sake, a sheet of plywood, when that delaminates, the layers just peel off. The, the glue lamb uh, delaminate or doesn't delaminate, it chars. Right, thanks for that. That's brilliant. Oh, and what I'd be right in saying is that with when you take the the size of the I suppose glue lamb would have to be sized such that when you take the charring right into into yeah. so your so, glue lamb might be massive, but you're, you're when you take the charring right into contention and your structural stability of the building relies on what's left when the when the timber is charred. Exactly. Yeah. So when you could have uh, on large structures, you could have a glue lamb that's for argument's sake, 800 by 400. So eight, uh, 800 in depth, 400 wide. Um, the charring rate is based on the 400 wide because that's where the structural, the structural integrity of the glue lamb is at its center point. So um, a, a charring rate, I might have the calculation in an email. Um, I, if I find it, I'll share it in the chat. Um, I'm nearly sure, um, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but there, there is a calculation for the charring rate. Yeah, and then, perfect. And then it also changes with the species of the timber. So you could have glue lamb made out of hardwood or softwood. So if it's a hardwood, obviously the charring rate is a little bit higher because it's a different species of timber. That's great. Thanks for that. No problem. Perfect. Well, if that's if that's all the questions, um, I just want to say thanks very much for for hanging around and listening to me, <laughs> um, and giving up your time because I know how precious time is these days. So uh, thanks a million. Likewise, Owen. Thank you so much for the presentation. It's really always very insightful. Um, you have a few thank yous in the chat there. People put, typing in away. Um, so yes, one of you wouldn't mind just put your email address in the chat. Because oh yeah, we'll be able to get to that outside the teams, and they'll be able to contact you then. Um, I really like the idea of um, going to see that open day, you know, and, and getting up there and walking through it. I think there'll be lots and lots more questions then at that point. Um, yeah, they've actually they've built like a visitor center, a cafe, and stuff like that. And all the internal beams are all Irish glue lamp. So they've carried on from the, the walkway. They've used as much glue lamp as possible. That's very wonderful. Brilliant. Brilliant. So there's my email address. And then I'll just put my phone number in. Yeah, and as I said, look, if anyone has any questions, especially students, just reach out and pop me an email and uh, I'll help where I can. And if there's anyone looking for CPDs or even just for me to pop in and go through a, a connection or some product or anything like that, please don't hesitate to contact me. Wonderful. Thanks a million. I really appreciate that. Perfect. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks, Irene. Uh, thanks, William.